students in the today's session we are going to talk about sympatholytics now sympatholytics are the anti adrenergic drugs and these are the drugs that bind to alpha and or beta receptors and they antagonize or they prevent the action of adrenaline noradrenaline and the other related adrenergic drugs so in simple words sympatholytic drugs are those drugs that prevent the action of adrenaline and or other adrenergic drugs now these sympatholytics are of two types either they are the alpha blockers or they are the beta blockers that means either they block the alpha receptors or they block the beta receptors so anti adrenergic drugs or sympatholytics bind to adrenergic receptors that is alpha and beta receptors and block them preventing the action of adrenaline and the related drugs now these sympatholytics have all, as i have already told you are of two types alpha and beta blockers now in the today's session we are going to emphasize on alpha adrenergic blockers or the alpha adrenergic antagonist now these are the drugs that block alpha receptors of adrenaline and noradrenaline now this we already know that uh, the adrenergic drugs uh, adrenal adrenaline noradrenaline or the other catecholamines or the other related drugs they bind to either the alpha receptors or the beta receptors or they show the characteristic feature of binding to both the alpha and the beta so alpha adrenergic blockers or the alpha adrenergic antagonists are those drugs that block the alpha receptors these drugs have the they show the affinity that means they are capable of binding to the alpha receptors after binding to the alpha receptors they show no efficacy that means they are not capable of producing their own pharmacological action they are only they are only capable of antagonizing the action of adrenaline or the other adrenergic drugs now coming to the classification classification of alpha blockers alpha blockers are of four types now first type is the non selective irreversible alpha blockers non selective means these are the drugs that block alpha 1 receptor as well as alpha 2 receptors alpha receptors are of two types alpha 1 and alpha 2 so these non selective drugs are the drugs that block alpha 1 receptor as well as alpha 2 receptors now another important thing these are the non selective irreversible alpha blockers that means once they bind to uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh, they antagonize the action of adrenaline and this antagonism it cannot be reversed by increasing the concentration of adrenaline so therefore these are the irreversible non selective alpha blockers antagonism cannot be reversed example is phenoxybenzamine now this phenoxybenzamine it is used for the treatment of hypertension which is caused because of the uh, pheochromocytoma this will study in the Uh, later part of the session now the second category of drugs are the non selective reversible alpha blockers non selective again uh, they are capable of uh, blocking alpha 1 they block alpha 1 as well as alpha 2 receptors however the antagonism is reversible that means antagonism is reversed by increasing the concentration of adrenaline at the synaptic a uh, cleft that is by increasing the concentration of adrenaline at the receptors the antagonism can be reversed in this category we have the example of ergot alkaloid for example ergotamine halogenated ergot for example dihydroergotamine then we have imidazoline for example phantolamine miscellaneous drug for example chlorpromazine a uh, third category of alpha blockers are the alpha 1 selective blockers now these are the alpha blockers that block alpha 1 receptors in this category we have drugs uh, uh, very important drugs like prazosin terazosin doxazosin alfazosin tamsulosin now these drugs that is the alpha selective drugs they are 
uh, basically used in the treatment of hypertension and they're also used in the treatment of benign prostate hyperplasia. Now the fourth category of alpha blockers are the alpha 2 selective blockers. These are the drugs that block alpha 2 receptors. Example is Yohembe and this drug it is not used clinically, it is used only experimentally. Now first we are going to talk about non-selective alpha blockers. Non-selective alpha blockers are the sympatholytics that block alpha 1 as well as alpha 2 adrenergic receptors. Now, alpha-1 receptors are present on the vascular smooth muscles. That, is, that means they are present on the walls of the blood vessels. And uh, noradrenaline binds to these alpha-1 receptors and it produ produces vasoconstriction. That is constriction of blood, blood vessels. Because of the constriction in blood vessels, there is increase in peripheral resistance and there is rise in the blood pressure. Now, alpha blockers, they bind to alpha-1 receptors. They block these alpha receptors, uh, that is alpha 1 receptors, and they antagonize the action of noradrenaline. That means when noradrenaline was acting, when noradrenaline was binding to alpha 1 receptors, it was producing vasoconstriction. Now alpha blockers, they will antagonize this action and they produce vasodilation. And because of vasodilation, there is fall in the blood pressure. So these alpha blockers, by acting on, by binding to alpha 1 uh, receptors, they produce fall in the blood pressure. Now coming to alpha 2 receptor, alpha 2 receptor is present on the presynaptic nerve ending. Now here this I have uh, shown over here within a diagram. This is an adrenergic nerve cell. When this adrenergic nerve cell is uh, activated, there is a release of noradrenaline. Noradrenaline binds to its alpha receptor and or beta receptor. Now one very important thing to note over here is this that in most of the cases the receptors are present on the post-junctional membrane that is uh, receptors are present on the effector organs on the post-junctional membrane or the postsynaptic membrane now it is the alpha 2 receptor which is present on the presynaptic membrane or the pre-junctional membrane and activation of alpha 2 receptor inhibits the release of noradrenaline when this alpha 2 receptor is activated, it inhibits the release of noradrenaline. So noradrenaline, when it uh, binds to alpha 2 receptor, it causes inhibition of release of noradrenaline by the adrenergic neuron. So alpha blocker, they will antagonize this action. So these alpha blockers, they will increase the release of noradrenaline. Now here again, there is another thing to note that uh, since there is fall in the blood pressure our body tries to compensate for the swollen blood pressure body tries to increase the blood pressure so that the blood pressure comes to normal and therefore the body increases the heart rate as there is increase in the release of noradrenaline noradrenaline increases the heart rate so that the blood pressure rises and come back comes back to normal so this increase in the release of noradrenaline results in tachycardia and this tachycardia occurs because of fall in blood pressure and therefore this tachycardia is called as the reflect, reflex tachycardia. So alpha blockers by binding to alpha 1 receptors produce fall in blood pressure, uh, they produce vasodilation and by blocking um, the alpha 2 receptors, these alpha blockers, they increase the release of noradrenaline. And then uh, these are the two main pharmacological actions of non-selective alpha blockers. Now sympatholytic phenoxy phenoxybenzamine, it is a non-selective alpha blocker. It blocks alpha 1 receptor as well as alpha 2 receptors. It is an irreversible blocker. That means the antagonism cannot be reversed. It produces fallen blood pressure as we have already discussed and it is used in the treatment of hypertension. Hypertension caused by pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor of adrenal gland in which there is excessive release of adrenaline and this adrenaline uh, causes increase in the blood pressure that is hypertension and phenoxybenzamine is used for the treatment of this hypertension. Another sympatholytic which is non-selective is pantolamine. It also blocks alpha 1 as well as alpha 2 receptors. It is reversible that is antagonism can be reversed. Uh, blockage of the receptors can be reversed. 
It also produces fall in blood pressure. It is a rapidly acting alpha blocker. It has a short duration of action around about 10 minutes. And it is used for the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. As we have already discussed, that uh, pheochromocytoma it is a tumor of adrenal gland. There is excessive release of adrenaline, which uh, causes rise in the blood pressure. And administration of phantalumine, which is an alpha blocker, blocks alpha 1 as well as alpha 2, should produce fall in the blood pressure if there is pheochromocytoma. And see over here, phantolamine, when it is injected uh, at a dose of 5 mg intravenous over 1 minute, if the systolic blood pressure falls by uh, about 35 mm of mercury and diastolic bl blood pressure falls uh, by about 25 mm of mercury, it shows that uh, hypertension is because of pheochromocytoma and this is used as a diagnostic tool of pheochromocytoma. Phantolamine is also used for the, so the, uh, one, it is used for the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. It is also used for the treatment of hypertension uh, caused by pheochromocytoma. Now we will be talking about alpha-1 selector blockers. That is sympatholytics that selectively block alpha-1 receptors. They do not block alpha-2 receptors. They, blo they block only alpha-1 receptors. So these are the sympatholytics that block alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. Now let's see the, the location of alpha-1 receptors and the action of uh, noradrenaline on these receptors. Alpha-1 receptors, uh, they are present on the smooth muscles. Uh, they are present on the smooth muscles of blood vessels. And adrenaline or noradrenaline causes a vasoconstriction. So alpha-1 blocker, it will antagonize the action of noradrenaline and alpha-1 blocker will, use, will produce vasodilation. And indication, vasodilation will cause fall in the blood pressure. So indication, that means uh, a blocker, uh, the drug or the sympatholytic can be used for the treatment of hypertension as it produces fall in blood pressure. And these are the three uh, alpha blockers, uh, selective alpha blockers. Uh, selective alpha-1 blockers which block the alpha-1 receptors, uh, prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin. Uh, these are used for the treatment of hypertension because they reduce the blood pressure. Now apart from the vascular uh, smooth muscles, apart from the smooth muscles which are found to be present in the blood vessels, uh, smooth muscles uh, are also present on the urinary bladder and that is a trigon of the urinary bladder. Uh, a smooth triangular region which is found in the urinary bladder that is a trigon. Here also smooth muscles are present and in these smooth muscles of trigon uh, are located the alpha 1 receptors. And alpha 1 receptors are also present uh, in the smooth muscles of prostate gland. So alpha 1 receptors uh, apart from the vascular smooth muscles, uh, alpha 1 receptors are also present uh, in the smooth muscles of uh, trigon or we can say uh, the neck of the bladder, bladder neck. Trigon, uh, we can say, is the bladder neck. Uh, so, alpha-1 receptors are present in the smooth muscles of the bladder neck and uh, alpha-1 receptors are also present in the smooth muscles of prostate gland. And uh, activation of alpha-1 receptors, uh, the action of noradrenaline, when the noradrenaline binds to alpha-1 receptors of the smooth muscles which are found to be present on the trigon, as well as the prostate gland, noradrenaline produces contraction, contraction of these smooth muscles. And uh, uh, because of the contraction of uh, uh, the smooth muscles, uh, there is increase in the tone of bladder neck and there is also increase in the tone of prostate smooth muscles and uh, because of which there is difficulty in urination. Alpha-1 blo blockers, uh, they antagonize the action of noradrenaline and therefore uh, they produce relaxation of the smooth muscles of uh, bladder neck as well as uh, they also relax the smooth muscles of the prostate gland and the relaxation of uh, uh, these muscles overcome the blockage uh, in the flow of urine which is produced by the contraction and therefore these alpha 1 blockers are used for the treatment of benign prostate hyperplasia uh, we have drugs like uh, alfuzosin and tamsulosin. Uh, these are used uh, for the treatment of benign prostate hyperplasia. 
Now let's see exactly what is benign prostate hyperplasia. Uh, this I have shown with the diagram. Uh, this is a this is a normal condition. This is a normal diagram, and uh, this is a norm, normal prostate gland, uh, a normal urethra, a urinary bladder. Uh, this is the trigon. Trigon is a triangular region. It is a region which has three opening, uh, two openings. These are the two uh, ureters. Uh, so these are the uh, this is the opening of one ureter. This is the opening of uh, second ureter, and this is the opening of uh, urethra. So this trigon is a triangular uh, structure and it has three openings and this is the prostate gland which encircles the uh, urethra. This is the normal urethra and there is a flow of urine. Uh, there is normal flow of urine in this uh, urethra. Now this is the condition where there is enlargement of the prostate gland. This is benign prostate hyperplasia. This is termed as benign prostate hyperplasia. Now there is enlargement of the prostate gland. And since there is an enlargement of uh, prostate gland, this prostate gland, uh, it, it uh, compresses the urethra. Uh, this prostate gland is encircling the urethra. And since there is increase in the size of prostate gland, and since there is also contraction of the smooth muscles of prostate gland, this prostate gland, it compresses the urethra. Now, apart from this, in benign prostate hyperplasia, there is also a uh, uh, contraction of the bladder neck. And because of the contraction seen in the bladder neck, there is difficulty in the flow of urine. There is compression of urethra, again there is difficulty in the flow of urine. So, in a benign prostate hyperplasia, there is difficulty in urination uh, because of the, uh, because of the uh, contraction in the bladder neck. And because of the uh, contraction in the smooth muscles of the prostate gland, uh, the urethra, it's, it gets compressed. And because uh, this urethra, it gets compressed, there is difficulty in urina urination. Uh, symptoms like uh, dribbling, weak stream, incomplete uh, bladder emptying, painful urination and urgency. So these all are the symptoms of benign prostate hyperplasia where there is increase in the size of uh, prostate gland and it compresses the urethra and therefore uh, flow of urine is not normal. There is restricted flow of urine through the urethra. Now uh, these alpha 1 blockers, alfuzosin and tamsulosin, they are found to be very useful in the treatment of benign prostate hyperplasia because they are the alpha 1 blockers and they produce a, a relaxation. They relax the smooth muscles of a urinary uh, bladder trigon that is the bladder neck. And they also relax the smooth muscles of the prostate gland. So these alpha-1 blockers, they antagonize the uh, they antagonize uh, smooth muscles of bladder neck and prostate. And they relieve the voiding uh, system. They relieve the voiding uh, system. That means the urination becomes easy. Flow of urine is improved. And there is a more complete emptying of the bladder in the patient suffering from benign prostate hyperplasia. Now, adverse effects of these uh, alpha-1 blockers, uh, they can produce postural hypotension. Uh, they can produce headache, again because of uh, hypotension, in case they produce hypotension. Uh, nasal congestion because of the dilation of blood vessels of the nose. So, these are the adverse effects of uh, selective, alpha-1 selective blockers.